the world over stock markets are displaying unprecedented exuberance over the Pfizer statement that its vaccine is 90% uh, effective. Well, certainly it's a matter of celebration for everyone who is reeling under the COVID-19 and the COVID-19 induced economic crisis. At a time when everything is gloomy, the rising infections, the second wave of infections, the world is face, uh, uh, passing through an unprecedented period of economic uh, hardship. And a, a news of uh, a vaccine discovery really matters a lot. So therefore, it's a great scientific breakthrough, it's a great medical breakthrough. So everybody is happy with that. Not just the Pfizer, the Russian Sputnik vaccine is also uh, claiming to be 92% effective. But the world doesn't believe Russia so much. So obviously when it comes from a pharma major like uh, Pfizer, we are very happy with that. So the scientific uh, aspect of the announcement is certainly a matter of celebration. But we should actually uh, read the uh, fine print in the entire process to understand how far this hype is justified. The hype over the Pfizer vaccine is justified. Firstly, there are, any vaccine has to be judged on five parameters. One, efficiency, efficacy, two, safety, three, logistics, four, cost, and five is the availability. What do you mean by effect, efficacy? Efficacy is of two kinds. Firstly, to what extent the vaccine will provide the protection from the virus and how long this protection will last, the endurance or the durability of this protection. Safety refers to the, uh, to the possible side effects due to inoculation. And logistics is the storage and transportation of the vaccine till the delivery point. So the cost and availability for uh, are, are the other two factors. So if we judge the Pfizer vaccine, I'm not questioning the, its efficacy and safety because that is a matter of science. I'm not capable of questioning it. Well, the Pfizer claims it to be 90% effective, so let's believe it. And uh, the safety aspect is also, let's believe the Pfizer. So, but the question is, the major question comes is in terms of the logistics. So this is a particular type of vaccine which has to uh, be transported, stored in a very, very low temperatures. Temperatures that prevail in Antarctica region. So the, this virus has to be stored and transported at a minus 70 to minus 80 degrees temperature. Even our normal freezers maintain 0 to minus 5 degrees temperature. So we don't have the, this cold chain, extreme cold chain networks in our country to actually store and transport the Pfizer vaccine even if it is available to India. So the, it's very difficult to really put in place such a cold chain infrastructure. We do not even have adequate infra, uh, cold chain infrastructure to store our vegetables and other perishable products and agriculture produce. Forget about storing the vaccine at such a sub-zero temperatures. So this is the first problem. The logistics is a big problem, not only for India, for the other low and middle income group countries. Then the second problem comes is the cost. Well, the Pfizer has not yet revealed the cost of the vaccine. But uh, many experts in the field suggest that this vaccine will be too prohibitive. It will certainly be very costly. So how, how much countries like India can afford to buy this vaccine for universal immunization? So you, you require, the, the, or the suggestion is that two doses are required. So 135 crore, you need 270 crore doses of uh, vaccine. So the cost is also a, certainly a big matter. Then the third, the, the, the third aspect is the availability. Pfizer has made an announcement that it can manufacture 1.3 billion, that means 130 crore doses of uh, medicine, a, a, a vaccine by uh, early to, uh, 2021, early next year. But the problem here is already the Pfizer has entered into advanced purchase agreements. Pfizer has already signed advanced purchase agreements with USA, UK, Canada, Japan and European Union countries to the extent of 1.1 billion or 110 crore doses. 
So actually out of the 130 crore doses, Pfizer will manufacture by early 2021. 110 crore doses are already been sold out. Their advanced so, uh, purchase agreements have already been signed. So only 20 crore doses are left out for the entire, for the rest of the world. So how much you can get is a matter of anybody's guess. So obviously that clearly shows that even if India wants to afford it, even if India puts in place the cold chain infrastructure, it won't get the vaccine till the end of the next year or even the early 2022. So availability is a big, big factor for the, because the vaccinationism that is going on today. So the United Kingdom, for instance, has entered into advanced purchase agreement with six vaccine candidates, not just um, Pfizer. It has entered into agreement with six. So India can only hope if AstraZeneca makes a headway because Serum Institute of India has entered into an agreement with uh, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. So we'll certainly get a part of that uh, vaccine for India. And the Bharat Biotech vaccine is another hope for India because it's an Indian company. And uh, certainly a major part of it will be available for India. And the third hope is our Ready Labs has entered into an agreement with the Russian uh, Investment Development Fund that finances the Sputnik vaccine. So these are the three vaccines which India can hope for. So, but the Pfizer vaccine is certainly looks like a very difficult uh, thing for us to really procure, really uh, store it, transport it and, uh, and provide it for universal immunization. And if the cost is prohibitive, what will happen? Even if India could able to get a few, crore do few lakh doses of it, it will not be available to everyone. Only the rich, the affluent, the prosperous, the people who have the high level contacts will have the privilege. So there will be corona have, sorry, there will be vaccine haves and vaccine have nots. So India has to witness this kind of a situation where even the wealth determines access to life also. Right to life is also becomes a factor of the money or the wealth you have.